James Brooks from the Juno Empire. Wanted to ask you about the concept of splitting off the POMV from the other aspects of things. In that case, in a scenario where that bill passes, would the dividend be set as part of the annual budget process, or do you just will you do something else? Well, it could go either way, and that's that's what I've been asking people to consider. If if Isolating the issues is of first importance. Let's look at them one at a time instead of there being all these levers that have to happen before anything passes. How successful has that been in the last three years? It hasn't. We're at the same place. Let's, let's evaluate those issues one at a time. Drop a bill on what you think the dividend should be if you'd like to do that. Let's have a separate discussion that's not tied to the POMV, which is simply the max draw. It's the max healthy draw. Mine, the one that I dropped um, that we've all talked about is five and a quarter down to five. If you have a different solution, it'll go through the legislative process. It may be different than that initial bill. I'm okay with that. If you want to drop a dividend bill that changes the statute, then do so. And let's talk about that in both parties. I mean, in both bodies and make sure that we um, have something that can pass. It's, it's going to be the key issue. They talk about taxes as it being a requirement of a POMV, which that was lumped into the 26, Senate Bill 26 last year. I think it's inappropriate. There's not a tax on the table this year. We don't know of a tax. The governor dropped one a wage tax that has to do with additional spending and um, capital, but it's not related to the fiscal gap. POMV, the legislature is going to use part of the earnings reserve this year. We demand that it's rules-based. It should be a separate issue and not related to all the other policy going around the building. In, in that case, would um, existing statute govern the dividend? What existing statute has governed the dividend for the last two years when it's been changed by the governor and then last year the governor and the legislature agreeing to a lower dividend. That's something that has to come to the table. That's why I'd actually like to see a bill where we can talk about what that should look like and, and um, let people, let the public engage. It's obviously very important to a lot of Alaskans. But it's a discussion we should have in this building as well, as opposed to just ending up with a number and a bidding war. I don't think that's an effective way to govern either. Other questions? Do we have anyone on the line? Steve Quinn with KTVA Online. Steve, do you have any questions? Yeah, I've got a question. Thank you. Um, didn't just last week uh, Senator Bob Inhofe say that uh, there, you guys weren't going to uh, seek a uh, spending cap? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no. What what the senator said was that we were isolating the issues. The spending cap is still very important to the Senate majority, and we're going to pursue that. We just did not want it to be confused in the effort to um, result in a structured draw of the earnings reserve, which, again, will be used this year. Um, it needs to stand on its own merit, as these other issues do. So then what does this do to SB 26, which is in conference committee? SB 26 is in conference committee. It remains there. And if, if those issues can be isolated in conference to end up with the same result, structure draw the POMV, um, then that bill may move forward. But it seems jammed. And um, our efforts are to move forward with a result where we can gather with the House on some solutions beginning with a POMV, a structured draw from the earnings reserve so we don't jeopardize the fund or jeopardize dividends, and then we can have separate discussions if needed on the other issues. James? Sure. Uh, Senator Meyer, this one's mm -hmm. actually for you. Good. Uh, towards the end of a session, we always see things start to come to the Rules Committee, other bills that aren't quite as high profile as other things. Do you have any sense on how that's going to shape up towards the end of session in terms of other things that aren't budget related and uh, critical like that? Sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, no, I mean, if a bill has merit, it's, it's, it's going to pass, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a priority bill or um, maybe not a budget related bill. But certainly uh, uh, there's a lot of maybe less important bills that are important to that individual. That's why they introduced them, and it's important to his or her district. So, yeah, uh, if the bill makes it through the committee process in both House and Senate, um, then uh, um, 
certainly we'll, we'll um, consider getting it on the floor. As you know, um, typically there's a whole bunch that happen all at once there towards the end. And, and um, uh, we'll, we'll try to avoid that this year and try to hear some of these bills earlier. As you know, we've already heard uh, one House bill and, and have another one actually on the floor resolution today. Um, is this, are you looking at any kind of artificial deadline like 90 days, 120 days, where you'll stop considering other bills? Uh, you know, we haven't uh, we haven't set that deadline yet. That's something that uh, we'll have to work with the with the other body on. Just, if I can just add to that, our priority is passing a funded budget, and if there's time for other legislation, then we'll look at that. But Alaskans are looking at us and saying, "Are we going to sit here again in June and worry about what's happening?" And we are working very hard for a 90-day budget. We're at day 35. The House is well on its way through their subcommittee process. We've begun ours. Other legislation, other than some of the crime bills and some of the education bills, which we are dealing with, um, some legislation simply is not going to be a priority. A funded budget is a priority within 90 days. If we have to spill over a few days, I suppose that could happen. But some of you are reporting on this um, sort of assumption that we're going over for the long term because perhaps someone disagreed with a single statement. Our initiative this year, our priority this year is working together with the other body and the administration to pass a budget within 90 days. There's nothing that's going to be available in June that wasn't available on April 15th. Let's get there. Let's, let's pass what we can where we agree and let's start working on the differences where we don't and get it done. And if there's time left over, we'll deal with some of the less uh, pri of the bills of lesser priority. Let's put it that way. Nat? Um, Nat Hurst with the ADN again. Um, for Senator Meyer and Senator Giesel, we heard last week from some of the other senators, uh, but I'm just curious to hear your individual perspectives. Do, do you um, support uh, an increase to the BSA this year, and if not, why not? <clears throat> Start with Senator Meyer. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I, I think the, the proposal is to uh, keep the uh, the amount for education funding the same as last year and um, uh, me uh, for for myself as an individual um, I, I do support the the governor's budget on the education funding you know the school districts that have visited me are not asking for an increase in the BSA they are interested in several we have a couple bills out Senator Stevens has one that proposes actually funding education by April 1st so that uh, they can have stable staffing and uh, teachers know when uh, ahead of time that they're going to be hired. But you know, we could fund education at a higher level almost immediately by making some changes in the workers' compensation costs that are accrued to school districts. They pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in attorney's fees for work comp cases that um, we've identified as actually unnecessary. And um, I'm going to call it price gouging. School districts are being drained through, uh, through workers' compensation as well as the high cost of health care. You know, um, I saw recently that the Anchorage School District just settled their contract with their teachers, and uh, it's about $1,700 a month for health insurance for, for teachers. They've increased that, and they're going to add another, I think it was $800,000 to the health trust for the Anchorage School District teachers. That's a lot of money. All Alaskans are paying the highest health care costs in the United States. There are ways that we can reduce those costs, and that's something else that I'm looking at personally and, and have some proposals for. So we actually could increase funding to education very quickly if we addressed the costs of workers' compensation and health care. But as long as those costs are unaddressed and those costs are actually going up, like you just talked about, it, it, would you, do you guys agree that keeping education funding at a flat level essentially is a cut because they are having to spend more money on health care and other other things that are subject to inflation? The school districts are asking for, for uh, uh, date certain early funding. They are not asking for an increase in BSA. That's not what I've heard from them. I think some of them... So, so let, let's, let's do a 
Let's do a question answer thing. And uh, your question is, is it a cut? Um, our goal is to beat inflation. And I, I know that's a difficult, for, for some folks, I should explain it better. The, the governor's 10 year OMB budget assumes two and a quarter percent increase annually. We're saying we can beat that, as we did in the 90s when we stayed fairly flat for almost a decade, right? Um, education is, is a tough one because of those issues you talked about, Senator. There's no doubt that staying flat requires more help locally. Um, our first year of not increasing the budget, I believe, is, was 17. We were increasing the BSA until 17. I may be a year off. I don't think I am. Um, so we, we stayed flat last year. We're asking for another year of staying flat. Education needs to bring a case forward if they believe they need an increase after that, and they need to base it on something. But we do want them to work with us on health care. We have a health care authority going on. We believe we can have a larger pool. Remove it out of the negotiations for teacher contracts, and let's get a more uh, a plan that's much more effective, which could save hundreds of millions of dollars a year across the state. We're working on broadband improvements and workers' comp. And I have, we have a bill on retired uh, retired teacher rehires. There are things that we can do to bring the cost of education down, which is what the senator was saying. That will keep the effects of flattening or remaining flat. Uh, to a negative, but there's no doubt in the long term that a cost of a, an apple five years from now is going to be more than a cost of an apple today. That's something we're going to have to take on and evaluate in the future. This year, the plan is to stay flat from the Senate. I haven't heard any increases from the other body, um, any as, um, assumptions of an increase. And when I hear from educators, um, timely funding at today's level would be a uh, would be a win for them. I'm sure they'll be back next year with requests for increases. About three minutes till nine. Oh, yep, I have finance in three minutes. Uh, any, a final one, James? Yeah, sure. Uh, for Senator Giesel and Senator Machicki, um, the tax credit bill, if it does not pass, it does not advance, there is an impact on the budget. You have to switch some things around because the governor takes that for granted. How does that play out if it, how do you make that call on, hey, we're not gonna do it, so finance, you have to add money into the budget. How does that interplay work? So I, I um, that is, we've struggled with that, with this administration, how the budget document um, is kind of a wish list of past legislation that, oh yeah, hasn't yet passed. And that's okay, we've kind of adjusted to that. We know we'll have to make that adjustment about $175 million. Um, I frankly, um, I, I'll have to tell you that I, I support the approach in concept. Um, the discount is not only better for the state, the discount is also better for um, those that would have to wait for a statutory payment. It makes sense. I hope it moves forward, and I hope it's something we seriously consider, because that reduction in UGF spend associated with the statutory payment of credits is a good thing. It, it's a true definition of a win-win. And I hope it does move forward. If it doesn't, um, it's another 175 million of UGF. So I, I hope people are taking it seriously and we can get some of those. So when I talked about key legislation, for me, that's one of them. There's some crime bills that are key legislation. Um, I, I think there's a, uh, several bills that I put in the same category as a budget priority. And then there, there are a few others that probably aren't, don't raise to that level of priority. So we're at nine. Um, follow up with us if you have any questions you'd like to uh, have answered. And thank you very much for being here this morning.